focused was he said you need to get 12 envelopes and you need to set money aside for whatever you're going to do on your goal. And I thought that was kind of silly. But uh, the third day of his training, I had a bill come into my house and I didn't have the money to pay it. I told the guy exactly what And uh, I said, wow. Well, I got the money to pay it, but I said, I don't want this to happen again. So I went down to uh, Wilson Office Supply, which was our, at that time was our big office supply in the Stone Falls, and I talked to Dick Wilson. I said, hey, I need some colored envelopes. Do you have any? He says, well, yeah, I think we do. And he had some red, about the color of your shirt, he had some red envelopes. I got, went and got 12 of them, and I wrote on there what I wanted to put in them. And every Saturday at our dealership, we all, I'm sure you guys have something along the same lines, we got spiffs and bonuses and stuff on Saturday, so we all had weekend cash money. And so I started putting uh, one to $10 in those envelopes that Saturday. That led to a change in my focus on paying myself first. And it was something silly and small like that. But it's allowed my wife and I to be debt free, except for our home, which will be debt free over the two and a half more years. It allowed me to set aside what we've done so that she could retire at 58. And it will let me retire and be comfortable the rest of our lives. Because we made the commitment then to pay ourselves first. Pay God first, be ourselves next. Everybody else comes after that. One of the things um, I do to this day when I set my goals for the year, I set my monthly goals for income and for units. This calendar year, my goals for um, income, I said um, I wanted to have two months this year where I made 18 grand, and I wanted to have two months this year where I made 15 grand. Uh, I've made over 120 grand a year for the last seven years. Um, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, I don't have the big giant months anymore because it, that's not my focus. I've done over 40 cars multiple times. I've done over 30 cars dozens of times. I still do over 30 on occasion. Those months I want to make a big fat paycheck, I just work more. I work harder. I get more prospecting out because I know it works. I know that if I increase my prospecting numbers, it's going to increase my deliveries. And so those months that I want to have a big month, the months that I usually have big are May, July, um, December. Those are pretty consistent every year. And then depending on the manufacturers, uh, they usually have a big push once or twice a year. And those are the other two months that I'll pick up. But those are the three months I usually have them big. And if I don't have a vacation plan for one of those months, I'll just knuckle down and I'll work five days a week instead of four. Or I'll work late a couple of nights. Or I'll take some stuff home and get some prospecting stuff done. But if you'll make those individual goals, I want to make this much twice. I want to make this much one month. Which month are you going to do it in? How are you going to do it? If I'm going to move from, and I'm, you know, 10 or 12 grand a month is what I'm making right now. If I want to move from that, what do I have to do? How do I get there? Well, I have my number. I know what I have to do to generate those deliveries. If you have your number, you can do the same thing. You've got to have it. And one of the other things that I want to, I want to share with you, uh, I work at the GM store, and uh, General Motors has a program. Um, it's called uh, Market Excellence and uh, SFP, which is uh, a <coughs> bonus program. And that's, depending on your production, going to pay you somewhere between $2,500 and four grand a month from General Motors. Uh, when that program started four years ago, uh, my wife and I decided that that was going to be the money that we took and, take, and took care of long term for us. And so when, the, when I get that check every month, the first 20% uh, goes for taxes. The next 10% goes to my church. That's above and beyond what we do regularly. That, that bonus check is extra money the good Lord's given us. So that 10% goes to him. And then we've got a, a designated car fund. She paid cash for the last car she bought. I'm going to pay cash for the next truck I buy. We have a designated cash fund for that. We have been making an extra uh, half payment on our mortgage, and that's what we'll be able to pay it off shortly. But that money 
is earmarked for that plus retirement, and then we keep some of it every month just below. We want to come down three weekends ago. We came down to Fort Worth and spent the weekend and went to a show. We just wanted to get out of town because we can do that now. Our kids are grown. Didn't have any grandchildren responsibilities that weekend. But I took off early on a Friday, and we came down and had a weekend. It was great. And it was from that money that I didn't have to pay my electric bill with it. I didn't have to do anything else with it because I've taken the time to find out what my number is, where I need to put that money. So please, pay attention to the people in this room that are doing the numbers that you want to do and what they're doing and what they're doing with the money that comes from that. And I wrote something down that Fran said a while ago, and I'm, I'm going to repeat it to the room because it's so true. He said, the world doesn't care about you. It's up to you to create a career. You each have the choice today to change what you've done before you came in here today. The world's not going to pay you, and they don't care much about who you are or what you do. It's up to you. And if you do it with integrity, and if you do it methodically, it'll make a difference in your life and the life of your family. And then one of the other things I want to share with you also, uh, four years ago, I made the choice to go to my manager in December, and uh, I said, Brad, I want to um, give you a calendar for me for the year, and I want to give you my days off and my uh, vacation time, and I want to have a three-day weekend every month. And he said, what? <laughs> and, and I was uh, talking with Justin, talking with Justin earlier um, about uh, being in management, and he and I are in sales now, but we both been in management. We're in sales now because we choose to be in sales because it's the best thing to do. I love it. It provides so much for me. But I went to Brad and I said, "Here's what I'd like to do for this year. I'd like to give you a." a calendar for the year, I want to give you the days off. Thursday during the week is my day off. Let's get an assigned day off. Thursday's mine. Um, and I said, what I'd like to do is take a three-day weekend every month. I want to give it to you. I may or may not take it, but I want to have the option. I want to have it on the schedule. I don't catch floor traffic. I'm there as part of the staff. But I want to have the option to take off a three-day weekend. A Saturday, a Sunday, and a Monday. And he says, okay. He says, it's not going to hurt your production. And I said, if it hurts my production, I'll change it after the year. He said, okay, it's fair enough. And I have never looked back. I've never been happier either about my work schedule because it's mine. There are days I'm still at work at 8.30 because I'm with the customer. When I don't have to be there, it's like Justin and I talk about, if it's 5.30 and I'm done, I'm done. I'm going home. Somebody else can catch the traffic, watch the lot, lock up, check the keys, on, on, or the handles and all the parts. I'm going home. Because that's where I am in my career, and I feel like I give the dealership what they want out of me. And that's happy, satisfied customers and the numbers that create the dollars that they need to keep the doors open. So. Who in here is going to know their number when you get back to the dealership? Well, that's more than I expected. That's good. <laughs> okay. Prospecting. I'm a prospecting junk mail fool. Because of Fran Taylor and what he taught us umpteen years ago. One of the things I want to say about training, I go twice a year to something so that I get ideas from people just like everyone in this room. There are people in this room that can teach me how to sell more cars and make more money and make more customers happy than I'm doing today. And I've already talked to three of them that I got great ideas from and I'm taking home. This was a success and it's not even lunchtime for me. One of the things that you'll get out of Fran that you won't get out of anybody else when you go to trainers, they're going to teach you processes, they're going to teach you procedures, and they're going to teach you word tracks. What you get from Fran is prospecting. He's going to give you the tools. The people in this room are going to share with you the tools that put people in front of you in a closing situation. When you go to lots of other trainings, they're all good. 
and I go still because I still need refreshed. But this training is different. This is going to show you how to put people in front of you to put money in your pocket. So please pay attention, please take notes, and please put it into action when you get home. Okay, uh, Fran talked about soul by stickers. I'm guessing most of the people in the room have seen them or know what they are. I'm going to just <clears throat> take one and pass it back. I've been doing this actually uh, since before Fran. I saw this on automotive television or automotive training network. It's gone now, but I stole it from some guy somewhere. I put one in the driver's side door jam, I put one in the passenger side door jam, and I put one in the gas cap cover. This guy put one on the air breather, he put one in the trunk, he put one in the glove box, he put them all over the place. <laughs> I, I didn't. I just, I just do three. But I do it on every car. The sticker I'm passing around has got my name and my phone number on. Our dealership will pay for half of the expense of these if you get the nice uh, Patterson Auto Center logo and all that stuff on there. I choose not to. I want those people to call me when they have a problem. I don't want them to call the dealership. I want them to call me. I want them to call 766 and say, I want to talk to Steve. These stickers are on the door, and just like Fran said, it's a source of conversation. It's a source of laughter. But I want to share with you a story. Um, shortly after I started doing these, I got a call, probably a year, year and a half after I started doing them, I got a call from a guy. And uh, he said, Steve, this is so-and-so. I said, hey, so-and-so, how you doing? He said, hey, can you tell me about this red extended cab pickup truck? And I'm thinking, what red extended cab pickup truck? <laughs> and I said, well, can you tell me a little bit about the truck? And he said, yeah, it's a dark red extended cab. It's got about 62,000 miles on it. I said, it's got the tan interior on it? And he said, yeah. I knew which one he was talking about. It was a used truck from one of my customers who I had missed because we didn't give him enough to trade. But it was at a, one of our competitors' dealerships. On their used car lot. He just went and drove. <laughs> wow. On a test drive by himself. <coughs> and he called me. And uh, I said, Yeah, well, is it a good truck? I said, Yeah, it's a great truck. Um, I just, we, unfortunately, we couldn't get a guy enough for it. I said, How much are they asking for it? He told me, and I said, Wow. I said, That's an awful lot. And uh, I, said, I said, Have you already bought it? He said, No, I'm just driving it right now. I'll take it back and I'll probably buy it later. And I said, well, I mean, is, is it exactly what you're looking for? And he said, well, pretty much. I said, well, you know, would you like a new one instead of that used one? I, well, I'm going to give them a few thousand what they're asking for that. And he said, really? And I said, yeah, I think I can. He says, well, okay. And I said, will you do me a favor? And he said, yeah, sure. I said, give me your name and phone, sir. Because this was prior to cell phone, and then you have a deal with dealership. So I didn't know really how to get hold of them. And he said, sure, so-and-so, here's my number. I said, great. I said, if you don't work a deal, would you give me the honor to let me show you one of ours? He said, absolutely. So I waited about an hour, and I called. His wife answered the phone. She said, no, but he's on his way home. I said, would you tell him I called? Here's my number. Please have him call me back. She said, sure. Long story short, he came home and bought a truck from me. I share that story because that paid for 